One of the greatest minds of our time, Leonardo da Vinci, recognized the importance of the scientific process. Please dig up this quote and read it about a, a dozen times or so because it's written in da Vinci. But uh, he claims that a hands-on experience which has passed through the five senses is the mother of all certainty or the root of all reason. Even engineers have heroes, minor innovators, people who think outside the box. While the world sees a problem, they see a potential. They don't see limitations, they see possibilities. Uh, they create, they contribute, they make. So let me share a couple of them with you. So Henry Ford. Most of you know Henry Ford as the founder of the, of the Ford Motor Company. He found a way to mass produce cars and sell them inexpensively. He made contributions in um, automobiles and mass production strategies, of course, but also in labor wages and in franchise systems. We even owe our five-day work, work week in part to Henry Ford. Thomas Edison, he invented the light bulb and the phonograph and the motion picture and the stock ticker and a voice recorder and a battery for an electric car. And I could go on for a long time. He had over a 1,000 patents. And he's even cre cre uh, credited with creating the first industrial research and development lab. So how did they do it? They were tinkerers. Ford learned to repair watches as a boy, and as an adult he worked as a machinist and a steam engine repairman. Thomas Edison devoted a great deal of effort in developing a creative atmosphere. They understood how things were made, and they understood how to succeed in their maker environment. The image on the left is a machine shop from the early 1880s. This would have been similar to what Ford used. Notice the size of the machines. Notice how the men are dressed. This is a dirty job. The image on the right is a modern day, computer controlled machine shop. While these shops have very similar functions, there's a whole different set of skills necessary to use them. We would do well as educators to equip our future innovators to succeed using these technologies. Where will we go next? We've been given the car, the telephone, the rocket, the personal computer, uh, the Bluetooth integrated LED speaker light bulb combo. What's waiting around the corner? And who's going to lead the charge for these new innovations? Well, I don't know all those answers. Let me share a couple of potential. potential. Uh, most of you have probably heard of 3D printing, which has heard quite a bit about it. And it's simple. A little desktop printer squirts out uh, plastic. It looks like a, a hot, hot glue gun. And yet right here in East Tennessee at the MDF, at the Manufacturing Demonstration Facility, we're watching the future. We're printing things that will revolutionize the manufacturing industry. We can make zero energy houses. You just heard about that. Um, we can mold, make molds to construct 20 foot tall windmills. But we can make entire engine blocks out of aluminum. We can even 3D print cars. The world is changing and yet sometimes as cutting edge researchers and high, high education professionals, we miss um, um, these movements of the culture around us. About a year ago, my daughter changed my perspective with a simple comment. Uh, the family was out of town, um, and I was working on a home project that included changing light covers. So they came home, and as Hannah walked into the room, her first question was, who made the new lights? And so I assumed she meant, who replaced the light covers? So I said, I did. And she said, well, thank you for printing them. <laughs> so I did. Um, it got me thinking, how do we take this revolutionary view of the world around us and equip the next generation of makers? So how can we supplement our lecture style courses with lab experiences which pass through these five senses? Um, is there a substitute for the experience one gains from taking apart their car hoping that it goes back together? Something that our engineering forefathers uh, were far more likely to do. There's a revolution or resurrection in hands-on learning, and it's called the makerspace. Our makerspace is located in the basement of Perkins Hall and is a place for engineering students to creatively supplement their lecture courses with hands-on activities. I like to think of it as a skateboard park for engineers, a place where loitering is encouraged. Google's definition for a makerspace is a place in which people will sh with shared interest, especially in computing and technology, can gather to work on progress while sharing ideas. They typically include things like 3D printers, laser cutters, mills, devices, and more. Our makerspace um, owes its creation to, to uh, Professor Will Schleter from Engineering Fundamentals. 
the instructors in EF are always trying to find creative ways to supplement their 800 person lecture courses with hands-on activities. In the ICS, you can build educational tools yourself rather than just pulling them off the shelves for your students to use. So let's say you're an engineering student and you want to use the ICS. Travel down to the basement of Perkins and be greeted by some very friendly engineering student workers. Now you may have to be a little assertive to get their attention because after all, they still are engineers. <laughs> so, for instance, if you're interested in 3D printing an object for a class project, an entrepreneurial adventure, or just for fun, the students and staff will guide you through um, the entire process from making a model to printing it, and more than likely printing it over and over again until you get what you want. If it turns out that working in three dimensions really doesn't fit your fancy, laser cutters and embroidery machines can transpose two-dimensional objects from simple programs like Word onto plastic, wood, and even cloth. While we can't predict that our 3D printers will morph into Star Trek replicators someday, we do know that in the next five years, our makerspace will likely double in size as it takes form in um, a new engineering building. We know that this space will be the creative hub for our students for years and generations to come. Now we all know that lessons from mom aren't always so easy to swallow and sometimes there needs to be a whole lot of tough love. Learning isn't easy and experiments rarely go your way the first time. Well fortunately there's a small army of volunteers to help you succeed and experience all the joys in this new hands-on revolution. Thank you.